Hello, I'm Laura and I'm here at Cats Protection and today I've got for you the second chapter of Elmo Gets Arrested. Today I'm here with Bing, this lovely friendly boy, he's called Bing, and Bing's big brother Buddy is sitting up here. Now Buddy's feeling a little bit shy, so I'm not going to bother him, I'm not going to disturb him, I'm going to let him decide if he wants to come and see us, and it'll be lovely if he does, but if he doesn't, he can just stay where he is, where he feels happy and safe. So let's find out uh, what happened with the intruder that Elmo found in the garden. Chapter 2, Elmo and the Disappearing Fish. In the deep shadows of the next garden, up in the branches of a tall tree, an ominous shadow lay low across a big branch, watching, waiting, listening. That was a close call, he said to himself. Those two cats nearly caught me. The coast was clear. Elmo can't see me from here, he thought. Time to make my escape. Just as he started to climb down the tree, tail first, inching his way down with his back legs, the moon came out from behind a cloud. If anyone had been there, they would have seen a very scruffy cat indeed. That's if they could see him at all in the dark. His fur, what there was of it, was dark grey. He was like a ghost cat in the shadows. His grey fur was patchy, bald in some places, and he was very thin. One eye was partially closed and he had a scar on the same side of his face. He was a raggedy cat who looked at, looked at the world out of his one good eye with an angry stare. He looked up at the moon, lighting up the garden. Best get out of here, he said to himself. Elmo thinks he's clever standing guard, but he'll have to be very smart to catch me. Slinking away through the shadows without a sound, he didn't even look back. He smirked to himself at a job well done. Although he had lost part of his supper when Silky surprised him, what he had eaten had been very tasty indeed. This is a good area for hunting, he thought to himself as he licked his lips. I'll stay around here for a while. Nobody ever catches me, he laughed as he disappeared into the shadows. The next morning Silky woke up to find herself alone in the cat bed. No sign of Elmo. Surely he hasn't stayed out all night, she wondered. It was early, and Mr and Mrs Cotton weren't up yet. She decided to go out and look for him. She went through the kitchen and out of the cat flap into the garden. It was a big garden, with trees and shady corners and lots of places for a cat to hide. Silky sniffed the air. It was going to be another lovely sunny day. Now where can he be? Elmo, Elmo, where are you? She tiptoed around the garden, over to the pond and had a little drink. Water from the pond tasted so much better than the water left for them in a bowl in the kitchen. Around the pond was a rockery that went up to a dark corner under the magnolia tree. There were some shrubs there whose leaves were a lovely bright green. I wonder, can you tell where an orange cat might be hiding. Silky smiled. Oh, Elmo, you can't hide there behind those bright green leaves. I can see your orange fur. Sure enough, sticking out from behind the plant was a big bushy orange tail. Elmo, who had been sleeping soundly, woke up and stretched a big cat stretch. Oh no, I must have fallen asleep. Is everything okay? He asked Silky with a worried look. I wanted to make sure no intruders came back, he said. So you stayed on guard out here all night? Silky asked. You are good. Come on, let's go in and get breakfast. At the mention of food, Elmo was wide awake and followed Silky to the cat flap. A few hours later, all was peaceful in the house on Barry Grove. Mr and Mrs Cotton were sitting in the lounge on the large comfy sofa reading the local papers. They did this every Saturday morning. Elmo and Silky were lying just where the sunlight streamed in through the window, enjoying the warmth and looking like they were taking a snooze. Although everyone who has a cat knows 
They're never completely asleep. They always keep an eye half open to see what's going on, just in case. Just in case what, you may ask? Well, just in case something interesting happens, which it did this very day. My goodness, Babs, have you read this in the local paper, said Mr. Cotton. What, dear, said Mrs. Cotton, as she looked up from her magazine. Mr. Cotton read out loud from the paper. People living in Barry Grove report numerous incidents of fish suppers being stolen. On each occasion, fish left in the kitchen ready for dinner mysteriously disappeared. That's very strange, said Mrs. Cotton. Why would somebody steal a fish? They looked at each other and then looked at Elmo. You don't think, said Mr. Cotton. No, of course not, said Mrs. Cotton. Elmo wouldn't do that even though he loves fish so much. He's not a thief. Elmo and Silky heard every word. They opened their eyes and Silky blinked as cats do when they want to send a secret signal. Two blinks meant, let's go to our secret place. Elmo, who was looking very worried, followed her out of the room to a place that only they knew. They will never tell you where it is, so don't ask. Okay, is anyone looking? asked Silky mysteriously. They both checked, looking around carefully. No, I can't see anyone, Elmo replied. Quickly, through the gap, Silky said as she slipped through to the other side. Elmo struggled a bit. The gap was small and he is much bigger than Silky, but with a last big effort he pushed himself through. Ouch, he growled as something rough caught on his big bushy tail. They were in a dark space, inside somewhere. Elmo sniffed, his chin up, his whiskers twitching. Sniff, sniff, sniff. I smell spiders, he said. A tasty snack. Elmo, you are always thinking about food. Silky looked a little cross. We have work to do, she said. Sorry, said Elmo, as his big tummy rumbled. We need to find out who is stealing fish, she said with a thoughtful look on her face. I didn't steal the fish, I promise, cried Elmo. My mother taught me it's wrong to steal. No good cat would ever do that. I know you didn't, Elmo, I trust you. But we need to find out who it is, said Silky. What will we do? Everyone will blame me. They know I love to eat fish, he said. Elmo was worried and frightened. I have an idea, said Silky, but first, we need to call the Cat Alert team. Who are they? asked Elmo, puzzled. They are the cat detectives of the neighbourhood, Elmo. The Cat Alert team, or CAT for short. They will find the real culprit, so don't worry, she said. Amazing, Elmo thought to himself. I'm so glad Silky is my friend. Since he was adopted, Elmo had learned how wonderful it was to have a loving friend, a loving home and a friend to help him. Friends are so important. When you're worried about something, talking to a good friend can always help. Come on, Elmo, we need to send the signal for the cat team to meet, said Silky. How do we do that, he asked. There's a secret code, she said. Let me whisper in your ear, come close. She whispered something in Elmo's ear that nobody else could hear. Will you remember? she asked. Yes, it's shush Elmo, you must never say it out loud, warned Silky. Come now, we have work to do. We have to wait until midnight for the meeting, she said. I will send the code. Where do we do that? he asked. Follow me up onto the roof, she said. As they stood on top of the roof, Silky started to call. She called out a message that only cats would understand. Suddenly, the tortoiseshell cat appeared beside Elmo. He hadn't even heard her coming. Elmo jumped, a little in surprise. Oh, hello, Magic, said Silky. I thought you might come. Magic, is that your name? asked Elmo. Yes, I am very proud of it, Magic replied. 
She was called Magic because she seemed to just appear and reappear in the most unusual places without anyone knowing how or why. Sometimes that was a very useful skill indeed. One minute she would be on a rooftop and then sleeping lazily in the sun in an instant. Haven't I seen you before? asked Elmo. You have a good memory, said Magic. We were both at the RSPCA Rescue Centre together. And there's lovely Magic on the roof with Elmo and Silky. Did you escape? asked Elmo, astonished but pleased to see a familiar face. No, I was adopted after you left. I live in a house in the next street. It's a big family with five children. Sometimes it's good to find a quiet place for a while, Magic said with a twinkle in her eye. Magic, we need to contact Sir Jack Rascal, said Silky. It's urgent, a job for the cat alert team. Magic looked curious as cats often do. The three of them, Silky, Elmo and Magic, sat together on the roof talking in quiet voices about the problem of the fish suppers being stolen. Yes, you're right. We need to find the real thief before Elmo gets accused, said Magic. Spread the word to the cat alert team. Tell them to find Sir Jack Rascal and set up a meeting, said Silky. Midnight tonight. Elmo was listening to Silky in amazement and turned around to look at Magic. To his surprise, she'd gone, just disappeared, just as quickly as she'd arrived. She certainly is a magical cat, thought Elmo. Magic is one of our best cat detectives, said Silky. Never be surprised at what she can do. Just when you think you know where she is, she turns up somewhere else. She has helped solve many crimes in her lifetime. I hope she can help me, said Elmo, and find out who really stole the fish. We have to wait until midnight. Then we can begin, whispered Silky mysteriously. And that's the end of chapter two. I look forward to bringing you chapter three tomorrow and we can find out how the meeting with the Cat Alert team goes. I think Bing's enjoyed the story. He's still here on my lap. And I think Buddy's enjoyed it quietly from a distance. He's been having a little look, but he hasn't decided to come and see me yet. So um, I'll leave him in peace. I don't want to disturb him. But I look forward to bringing you chapter three tomorrow. Bye for now.